Hello Vault Heads, you are watching the self-proclaimed, sarcastically named Captain Keyforge, also known as PJ Broughton of the Steel City Snufflegators. And welcome to my coverage from Coat 9. This is round 2. Um, once again I've been selected for Adaptive, so these are the two decks that um, we are choosing from. Now, again, like last game, I would go for my own. Okay, the reason why we picked the 59 SAS for adaptive is because we think it's um, a bit of a sort of Archon Trap deck. I think that Dark Tidings are undervalued, and with the amount of creatures that's in that deck, plus um, there is some uh, Amber Control in there, um, there is a bit of Creature Control in there, um, we didn't just want to put it for, for Archon. Okay, um, but I do think that the deck I own is probably the better of the two, um, so that is what I would, would be looking at going for, um, and I think this game probably would be coming down to who got the 69 SAS deck and who got it for the right price chain-wise. Uh, so here we are with the, uh, the bidding process because we've both... Uh, selected the same deck so we've both chosen the 69 sas deck this time so there you go my opponent's bid one chain i've bid two chains they've bid three i've bid four they bid five i've bid six i'm going to think about it i mean i'll be honest this is the first time in any game i've ever bid chains to be fair, um, don't mind admitting it. Um, they've bid seven, so obviously I can look at bidding eight or I can pass it to them for seven chains. And there you go, as you can see, I passed it to them for seven chains. So off we go. Um, three unfathomable cards, two, uh, sorry, three sanctum cards and a Star Alliance upgrade um, in the turn one hand with me going first um, it's not that bad especially when you've got a bit of um, play raise the tide so <coughs> um, I've decided to keep that my opponent's mulliganed uh, so that's that's now my my turn one and I've put down Marshall Ewer passed it to my opponent they've gone into logos played science data forge gained an amber off the uh, the data forge thanks to science uh, so I'm just deciding do we go with those more fathom all cards or do we look at going back into the Sanctum, and I've gone for the Unfathomable because we, you know, we've archived the portal, played the Flash Freeze, played the Spark Fist, um, building a little bit of a board, but my opponent's not doing too bad with with Amber. Um, got down three Sanctum creatures, which is good, but also a shame to see when they're rocking four chains. You don't particularly want to see three creatures from the same house come down when they're rocking four chains. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, can't blame them for that, try and uh, get through their their hand, as it were. Um, so I've gone back into Sanctum this time. Um, I fought the Ewer into a Larry the Lake, put down the Badge Magus, <coughs> then played another Marshall Ewer. I can capture one with the Shifting Battlefield. go and then pass the turn so they put down a badge magus this time after going into sanctum use the Larry the lake to kill my spark fist use the staunch knight to kill my badge magus and then play cleansing wave to gain three amber pass the turn back to me I've gone into Sanctum again. Put down a Sir Bevor to protect the Marshal Ewer with the Amber on it. Put 
down Urium the Circumspect on the other side of the Sir Bevor, so it's protected by the taunt. Um, so I take out the other Larry the Lake um, and the Badge Magus. I mean, maybe I ought to be just taking out the Badge Magus and reaping. Um, but I mean, I know the power of those Larry the Lakes. You get all three of those down, and you get high tide and most decks are just going to have trouble doing any damage to anything on the board whatsoever. So my opponent's then gone into Untamed this time. Played down Cross Porpoises and gained Amber. That's enraged two of my creatures. Played in Fighting, that's killed one of them. Paddy, played Sporgora, then pass it turn to me. And they've still got two chains going at the moment on that deck still. A lot of big hands considering it's a, a, a chain deck there. Um, so I've gone into Unfathomable, played Portal, to raise the tide, played Flame Guild Enforcer and the Abyssal Zealot. Again, trying to um, keep up on the board because um, the only way I'm going to win really is by having a board. So they've gone into Sanctum, they've played Larry the Lake, they've played Sir Bivor. deciding what they're going to do with the staunch knight. And they reap with it, can't blame them for that. Then they've also played Cleansing Wave, got to a, a big check of eight. Um, so I'm going to need to start Alliance, play Techno Babble to stun uh, the couple of untamed creatures. deciding where to put that. There we go, so I've put it onto the Marshall Ewer. Put it onto Marshall Ewer again. I'm just thinking about the tide. I mean there's a chance I might have been better putting it on Urian the Circumspect, but it is enraged. And that's a mistake for me. You want those two at either side of the battle line. Um, but again we're all a little bit new to Dark Tidings and equally not my deck I haven't got a deck with those two creatures in it um, but it's still it's it's bad play from me that, that should have gone elsewhere and then I played down the shield you later so my opponent gets the first key um, they've put down Numquid the Fair which is going to get rid of uh, one or two creatures so they've got rid of the big strong Marshall Ewer And then got rid of one of those two Star Alliance creatures. Reap with Bevo, uh, Reap with Larry the Lake, Reap with Staunch Knight. Got to check again. See, so I can't get to check. Doesn't matter which house I go, I'm not getting to check with what we've got out there. So I've exhausted three Sanctum Creatures only because again I mean that's that's worth three reaps I suppose. Um, if he goes into Sanctum next turn use that uh, Flame Gill Enforcer to take him off check. with the Zealot, but um, yeah, not not great, um, I mean I've, I've finally built a bit of a decent board there, um, but uh, that Bouncing Death Quark is, is well tied for my opponent because I mean literally there he's got one untamed creature that's ready, one 
sanctum creature that's ready and that's it so without the, the bouncing death quark um, I mean the infighting's already gone and the umquid's already gone so um, that was a, a fortunate time to get rid of all those creatures I mean it probably cost me uh, a good three or four amber but again good time to play it just as I sort of taken the board again so uh, I've gone into unfathomable again play down some more creatures um, he's now forged his second key gone into logos meet with the the seaborg played positron bolt played infomorph pass the turn back to me I mean that strange ordination brilliant card but turn nine when he's got in his deck information exchange and doorstep heaven I mean he's not played doorstep heaven yet to be fair he's not needed to um, apart from the, the one time I was in check for the key um, I mean that is a, a bit of a disappointing one that again yet again I'm just I, I mean I've done well there to get to the check of six um, but again there is information exchange that he's not used yet there's also um, the doorstep to heaven that equally has not come down yet so yeah I mean that strange ordination it's absolutely terrible drawing it now I needed that anywhere in the first six turns um, but at the moment it's probably just going to get wiped away either with an information exchange or a doorstep to heaven because um, again you know he's, he's so there's the information exchange so that takes me off check quite going to be able to reap to check with the logos but again you don't know what else he's got in his hand um, that he could get to check with on the logos so there's a positron bolt that will gain an amber definitely going to be able to reap to check now with those two logos cards there you go so you can check now for the third key Uh, raise the tide there we go pass the turn back to me so I mean obviously I can get on a, a massive check but as I say there's doorstep to heaven in this deck and he's not played it yet um, so there's the gatekeeper so at least take him off check strange ordination all get played as well just obviously raising the tide so that it works there we go so um, <laughs> I mean I would expect him to have the the door because he's not played it yet I mean there's a chance it's right at the bottom of the deck I mean I didn't get to use the doorstep to in my first game my opponent got to 10 and forged a key off it and it wasn't there for me when I needed it um, but again, I mean, we're turn 10 now, we're very late on in the game, he's not played it, very good chance he's going to have it. Um, also as well, make absolutely no impact on him whatsoever when he's at 5, he's just not going to gain the amber off it But if he uses it. deciding what he's going to do there we're going for sanctum and there's the doorstep I mean I've got to say I think I am massively unlucky to lose this game three keys to one because now I'm going to lose this game three keys to one and the two times I put down a big board he gets number quid and he gets bouncing death quark both times I outboard him he has one of the three board wipes in his hand I get to nine amber and there's doorstep to heaven strange ordination when it came out absolutely useless you know absolutely useless when that card came out 
I mean, what I will say is my my opponents played a brilliant game to to do so well and win from so many keys. But the the cards I drew in the in the order I drew them were absolutely terrible. And when you're already playing a bad deck, um, doesn't give you uh, doesn't give you a great fighting chance to win the game. Um, also, as well as a team, as you can see, um, we we've lost the game. We uh, we won the Archon round, but we lost the reversal and we lost the adaptive. Um, so yeah, that leaves us uh, one and one. We've also got the buy now, so we'll be two match wins to uh, to one match loss, um, and then we'll uh, we'll see how we'll go in the next round. Thanks for watching. So feel free to like and subscribe. I love comments and criticism, so please feel free to leave those. I'll hope to see you next time. But until then, may the forge be with you.